time. Take your Bible to Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter. Before I forget, I usually just pray when we're done, so let me mention a couple of announcements. One is next Wednesday night, we will not meet. It's the night before Thanksgiving, so we, we will not meet. This Sunday night at 5, we'll meet in here for our Thanksgiving uh, dinner, our Thanksgiving meal together, so... It's a, it's a potluck deal, so uh, grab a pot and pray for some luck in it, I guess. I don't know how that works, but, but uh, anyway, I, we're lucky somebody will put something in their pot before they bring it. So. But anyway, we'll do that at 5 o'clock uh, Sunday evening of, of, of this week, so, so don't forget those two things. And also don't forget that the third, and this is coming up quick, the third is the, is the dinner theater. Uh, presentation, and if you've not uh, gotten your ticket for you and your family, you need to do that, and uh, I promise you that I, I think that you'll enjoy it, so I so, uh, hope you'll make plans to come this Saturday uh, evening and, and be with us. We're in Acts chapter 3, and uh, I, I don't know how things are going to line out for the for the holidays on, on the Wednesdays before. I know two of the Wednesdays in December is I'm, I'm going to, I did this last year, if you were here, and we did what is called the 12 Voices of Christmas, and we'll do those again, and I don't know exactly what dates that will fall on, but, uh, uh, we, but we won't do this act study, in fact, we may not do this act study for, for several weeks after tonight, but, uh, but anyway, we're, we're, we're going to tonight. We, we, we band, began this study several weeks ago, just kind of making our way through the through the book of Acts, and, and we find ourselves today in the third chapter, and we're going to read for a passage the first ten verses of that. So stand as we read, and then you can be seated again, and, and if you're able to stand, if you're not, it's fine. But beginning with verse 1, the scripture reads, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. I'm reading from the NIV. Let me flip my page over. Some of you Flipping out, where, where that come from? I'll start again. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, Walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat back begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Be seated. I, I, I want tonight for the time that we spend together, I almost, I almost skipped this. I almost skipped over this because the big part of, of the third chapter is with a couple, two or three weeks ago, we talked about Peter's first sermon. And man, it, it was a doozy. It was a, it was a good sermon and, and had good results. And, and Peter's going to preach again in, in chapter 3 and almost skip these 10 verses to, to, to move over and, and to get into that, into the preaching that, that we have in this, in the, the remainder of this chapter. But, but I, was, I, I was reading. On, on this tonight, and, or this week, for tonight, and, and, and I began to notice the, the, the people that are pictured or, or laid out here in, this, in these first ten verses, and, and what I want us to do tonight, and when I get through, I may wish I had skipped this. But preachers do that sometimes. You know, we get a wild hair and we say, I think I'll preach on this. And then we get through, we say, man, I wish I hadn't preached on that. So, so when we get on, I may wish I hadn't. But, but, but we're going to. And I want us to look at 
and find which of these three groups of people that we may be in, in this story. The, the first group is the most obvious, and that's the beggars. The beggars kind of the he, he's the main part of the he's the main part of the, the first part of the story. We're introduced to him and and the second and, and, and if you're filling out your outline it's gonna be beggars. If you if you if you come here tonight and and we kind of more identify with this crippled beggar, and maybe we're something of a beggar today, then, then our question, or the question for us may be, what do you seek? What, what do you seek? Now, but, but before we get farther into this chapter, I, I want us to notice something that, that is mentioned to us in, in the second chapter, in the 43rd verse. And, and it's there, at the close of Acts 2, that we read these words. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Now, I believe what we see here in, in chapter 3, to kind of get chapter 3 started in, in the part that we'll cover tonight, it, is I believe what we see here are, are some of those wonders, some of those amazing things that happen. And, and so as we, as we get into the third chapter, in the, in the second verse, we get to meet this guy, and, and this guy, he got up this particular morning, and he, that day began, however old he was, we don't know how old he was, but that day began just like the other thousands of days that he's ever lived. Tens of thousands of days, and they all began the same. Because think about it, he's never been able to walk. He's never been able to get up. So all of his quote-unquote adult life, some of his family or some of his friends have come to his home and they picked him up and they carried him to his designated place outside the gate and they had set and they would set him there at his usual spot and 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 he did the same thing every day and the scripture told us that the reason that he sat there was to ask alms or to beg alms this is what this guy did every day now had we met this guy on this morning as whoever was was bringing him toward the temple, we, if we would have said, what do you think's in store for you today, Mr. Beggar? What do you think he would have said? He would have probably said, much like we say when somebody asks us, something along the line of same old, same old. You know what his aspiration was for that day? It was that somebody, because it had happened this way for almost every day of his life, was that somebody would come along with some loose change in their pocket and drop it in his cup to help him survive that day. That was what he expected that day. That's what he, that's what he desired for that day. And that's what he had been, that's what I think he had been desiring for for, for all the days leading up to this day is it, is it just that somebody would come along and give me enough to get through this episode, this day, this crisis, this circumstance, so we can get on to tomorrow. Now, when I told you I want us to look for who we identify with in this story, I want, it to, I want us to look this way. It may be tonight that we've come to this place, and, and, and I got to think about this this evening. People, we started gathering, some of you started getting here a little after five. From a little after five until a little after six, some of you drug in a few minutes late, but that's okay. <laughs> until a few minutes after six, people would turn in the parking lot, they'd get out of their car, and they'd walk in this building. And while we're doing that, there are people going back and forth up Lufkin Avenue. Now, I wonder what those people thought. Something along the lines of, I wonder what they're going there for tonight. I wonder, I wonder why they go up there on Wednesday night at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. I, I wonder what it's for. Well, it, it, it may be tonight that it, it, if we more fit the, the line of the beggar, that maybe that we've come here, and listen, we all have crises in our life, okay? And, and if, we, if we say we don't, I don't know if we're very truthful. We all have it, okay? And, and being that we all have crises and circumstances and all these things that go on in our life, Maybe tonight we've come just, just like this beggar. This beggar began this day just hoping that somebody would come along and maybe they would have a couple of nipples or whatever money was called back then, a couple of nipples or a couple of dimes 
to throw in his cup to get him through the day. Well, maybe we've come tonight looking for, well, I, I read this today and I thought it was so good, looking for a spiritual aspirin. Just looking for a spiritual aspirin to cure our headache, spiritual headache that we have today, but we know that that same headache's going to come back tomorrow. You see this blind, this, this lame guy, he was looking for a nickel or a dime or a quarter. But he knew when he got up tomorrow, he was still going to be lame. He was still not going to be able to function. He wasn't going to be able to walk. He wasn't going to be able to run. He wasn't going to be able to do, to do anything. So maybe we've come tonight, and this is letter A on your outline, maybe we've come looking for temporary help. Maybe we've come looking for temporary help. Now, now here's what I believe, and, and I trust you believe this with me, that the timing of this incident in Scripture is not accidental. In fact, I don't believe that anything is an accident with God. I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in coincidence. I don't, I don't believe in those things. I think that, that what happened here was the providential plan and providential timing of an almighty God. God knew. Okay? Now, when we say God knows all things, I mean God knows all things. God knew just who this man needed to meet on this day. God knew that. God knew as well, and God knew that this guy really needed, had a, had a need that really needed to be met in his life. But, but if we would have asked this guy, do you think there's anything providential about this day that your friends are going to sit you down here by the, by the gate? What do you think his answer would have been? I doubt it. I doubt it. I imagine it's going to be just a day like every other day. And he says, I'm just, I'm just going here to, to, to ask alms. And, and maybe maybe that's like us. Maybe we've come tonight we say, I'm going to hear Brother Eddie lead us in a song or two. And I'm going to hear Brother Steve Beller for 30 or 45 minutes. And, 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 and I'm going to come and, and, and maybe I'll get something that will just get me and tide me over until, until Sunday or until something else happens. And, and maybe we come looking for a temporary fix. Looking for temporary help. So maybe tonight we can most identify with the beggar seeking temporary help. But what if we could get more than that? What if, what if we could get more than temporary help? What if we could ask for a total healing? That's what the guy gets. The, the guy doesn't get the loose change that, that, that Peter and John have in their pocket to throw in, their, to throw in, his, to throw in his cup. You, you see, the, the, the beggar, he, he encountered Peter and John as they're on their way to the temple. And, and you remember what Peter spoke to him? You see, Peter and John don't have a lot of money either. In fact, Peter and John are probably just about as poor as he is. So, so, so Peter speaks up and he says, hey, silver and gold, we don't have them. Silver and gold, have I none? And, and, and yet what they give to him this day is more valuable that if we could fill this room with silver and gold. Amen. Right. You see, Peter, he reaches down and he grabs this man by the hand and he lifted him up. And verse 7 says that immediately his, that's, that's this beggar man, immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Now, now, now we know that Luke is the writer. And what is Luke? Luke, Luke's a doctor. So, so Luke's going to describe a little bit about the biological effects of this miracle. This guy who for all of his life, his legs have been dead weight. His, his, they've never been able to support him. They've never been able to, to allow him to walk. And, 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 and all of those things happen. But in an instant. In, in an instant, the Bible says down in verse 8, we're, we're jumping ahead, but in verse 8 it says that he leaped up. Had he ever leaped up before? No. 
But he did here. The Bible says in verse 8 that he stood up. He had never done that before, did he? But he did it here. And then the Bible says that he began to walk, and he had never done that before, did he? So, so all, all these things. Now, now, what did he show up looking for? Just, just, a, just some loose change. Give me, a, give me a spiritual aspirin for my spiritual headache. But he could have asked for so much more. And he received so much more. All he had asked for was a little help. A little change. A few arms. But he received a, a total healing. So if we're here today and we're beggars, and, and we come looking, well, what, what, what if today, what, what if Jesus wanted to do more for us than just give us a, a Band-Aid patch? But what if he wanted to do something life-changing? I, I don't know if we know this or not, but we do know and we do understand that he can do life-changing things on Wednesdays as well. Amen. Everybody know that? And I'm telling you tonight that if you're here and you come here, and I don't know your circumstance, I don't know the, I don't know all the deals that you may be going through, but we, we may have come here just looking for a little, just get me through the week. But he may be offering a life-changing, drastic change for you. He's the only one who can. If I were to mention the name John Newton to you, some of you would know who that was. John Newton wrote what's probably the, the best hymn that's ever been written. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. But John Newton wrote another hymn, and I think the name of it is Thou Art Coming to a King. That may be the name. And I looked it up today to, to, to listen to it. And one of the verses, he wrote this in the late 1700s. And John, wasn't he was a slave trader, wasn't in that right? Something along that line. And, in, in, well, they say, let me give you the words to, to one verse that John Newton wrote to this song. It's the second verse of that song, and it says, Thou art coming to a king. Large petitions with thee bring. For his grace and power are such, none can ever ask to much. None can ever ask too much. You don't have to keep hoping for pocket change. You don't have to keep hoping because Jesus can meet your needs beyond just today. He can, he can meet our needs long term. So, so maybe, maybe we're better. What do we see? Well, what the second group in this picture, are, we, we, we would call them the church or believers. Believers. And believers would be the church, and, and out beside that, it would be this line. What do you say? Now, if you're saved, if you've been born again, if you know you've been saved, this is for you. As Peter and John were going up to the temple for the three o'clock prayer meeting, God not only providentially set this beggar man where he was, but he also providentially had Peter and John at the spot where they were. And he had Peter and John walking past this lame man, and he put this, I believe this, God put this lame man in their path. God did that. He put this man in their path and set him in front of these people. And, and, and listen, do we still agree that he's the same? Yesterday, today, and forevermore? Well, think about this, if, if that's true. If God providentially set this lame guy in front of Peter and John, do you think that God providentially puts people in your path? In life? He does. He does. God, listen to me, God intentionally puts people in our path. He puts people in specific places because he knows, because the Bible says that the steps of a good man or a godly man are ordered by God. I, I told the people at Pine Press today, and I, I was telling Steve McComb all ago, if I ever go into a nursing home, don't come looking for me at Pine Press. 
I can't afford it. I can tell you just by one visit, I can't afford to, to go to Pine Crest. But I told those people, I said, I believe, I believe this, and I do, that before the foundations of the world were, that God had decided and God had decreed that I would stand in their little pulpit, in their little chapel service on this day. And God had already decreed which of them would be there. He had already decreed the guy that was going to miss chapel and go eat lunch with Steve McCall. I'm telling you, I believe that's how sovereign God is. Well, in our life, God puts people. Now, if he has saved us, he has, he has given, he has already done this permanent work in our life. He's already done this divine, wonderful, saving work in our life. So when he puts people in our life, why do you think he puts them there? It's usually not so that we'll walk by and give them a nickel. But he puts them there in hopes that we will really tell them the good news. Well, what if we did give them? What if we gave them a carload of nickels? What if we reached in our back pocket and got a $20 bill and gave it to them? My goodness. You know what happens to all that stuff? Whether it's a nickel or a 20 or a 100. If yours are like mine, it ain't going to last long. It just don't last long. That money's going gonna, gonna to spend. It, 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 it's going to disappear. So God doesn't just put us there to give them money. If, if we can and we're blessed to do that, 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 that's wonderful. But that's not what we're crossing paths with these people. But this will be letter A under number two. Is there any authority in your word? All these people that we cross paths with. Here's what Peter said in verse 6 to this, to this poor beggar. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now let me tell you what that sounded like to that guy. It sounded like the most ludicrous, most audacious thing that he had ever heard in his life. Because I don't know if this guy did it or not, but he very well could have. He could have, he could have, he, I, I figure he's either sitting on the ground or laying on the ground. And here's Peter, and Peter walks up there and he says, he, at the end of that verse, he says, I don't have any money to give you. He said, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Don't you think this guy's thinking in his mind, you nut. Can't you see that my feet are crippled? Can't you see that the bones in my leg are probably deformed? Can't you see that, that I, don't you know that I've been here almost every day of my life? Don't you know that, that, that I can't do that? Can't you see that, that I'm lame? We see God puts people in our path. And God providentially sets people uh, uh, along the, the journey of our life. And, 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 and the question is, is, is there any authority? And, and that your that I've mentioned, is there any authority in your word? I'm not talking about his word because we know there's authority in his word. But is there authority in your word? Do, do you walk up to those people that God has providentially, sovereignly put in the path of your life and said, Well, you know, I, I'm going to give you a dollar. I'm going to give you a quarter. I'm going to give you this, that, or the other. And, and we know that, that spins. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or white or black or yellow or any other color. It spins. It, it's not going to last long. But what, what they need is something that's going to last. Now, th there's, there's not any authority. You, you can say, well, here's what my preacher says. There's no authority in what your preacher says. You say, well, this is what my Sunday school teacher says. There's no authority in what your Sunday school teacher says, no matter who it is. The only authority that we have is the authority of the Word of God. Do, do, do you know what those people that God puts in our path, do you know what they need to hear? They need to hear the name of Jesus. They need to hear the name of the one who can truly change their life. They need to know that by his death, burial, and resurrection, that they can truly have a new life. They need to know that. Now, 
the majority of those folks, they're not gonna, they're not gonna enter our churches. So here's what God does, and listen, He does this with all of us. You may not like it, and you may not agree, but you're wrong. God puts those people in the path of our life so that we can share with them what He has done in and through us. Amen. They need to hear the name of Jesus. They don't need us to reach down into our religious purse and pull out a spiritual coin or two and throw it in their cup and say when you get better come down to church they need to hear about Jesus where they are where they are that's why God put them there and that's why God put you on that path on that particular day so we can't tell them things just to encourage them Say, man, keep your chin up. Hang in there. You need to give them something with authority. So does your word, as a believer, does your word have any authority? And, and, and I ask believers also this question. Is there any action to your word? Is there any action? Now, it, it was the, and, and I said this already, it was the authority of Jesus that healed this lame It wasn't Peter. It wasn't John. It wasn't because it was close to the temple. It was the authority of Jesus Christ that healed this man. But a part of what God was going to do, or what God did, it included the actions of Peter and John. It included the actions of Peter and John. Now, it, it, it started, it, it, it started, look back to verse number four. It started when they took notice of this guy. When, when they took notice, listen. Where's everybody headed this, this passing this guy? Where are they headed? Headed to the temple. Don't you imagine that a lot of those people did like we do? You ever go to Houston? You, you don't stop at a red light hardly in Houston that there's not somebody out there with a sign or a cup, homeless, need help, whatever it is. Now, I'm, I'm going to admit something. I'm sure that you're much more spiritual than I am. You know what I usually do when I pull up to one of those? I look straight ahead. I look straight ahead. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm just being honest. I'm bearing my soul to you. I look straight ahead, and, and I do not make, I, I, I may be having a conversation about it, but seldom do I, if, 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 if Linda were one of those, seldom do I just look over there and make eye contact. I don't do that. I want you to see what happens in, in this. When we get to verse number four, they Hundreds, if not thousands, of people have passed this guy, and 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 and, and they they've seen him probably from a distance, like I would see Jan sitting back there. But before before I got close enough to Jan for her to know what I was really looking at, I would I would look straight ahead so that we didn't make eye contact. So I I have this feeling that that a lot of people have really seen this guy, but when we get to the fourth verse, the Bible says that Peter. <laughs> Depending on your translation, it either says fastening or fixing. His eyes upon him with John said, look on us. And Peter, what he did was he took time. And we're all pressed for it. But he took time to look at this man. And not just to look at him to know that there's a guy in a red shirt sitting here and a and, and somebody in a red striped shirt said, nowhere. But, but he, he, he looked at this guy to really see him. So we see a lot of people but that we don't really see. Don't we? We, we see a lot, of, a lot of people that we really don't see. But, and, and, and that's the way we may be. Listen, if we've agreed that God providentially leads and directs our steps, and, and if we've agreed that God providentially puts people in our path, maybe he's put those people in our path for the purpose of us taking time to stop and look and fixing our eyes upon them and seeing, hey, he's got a need. So maybe we are Christians. Maybe, maybe we are believers. But is there any action with our is there any action with our Lord? Well, here's, here's the third. 
And, the, and this question arises to what we'll call the bystanders. The bystanders. And to them, we would ask this question. What do you see? What do you see? I, I, I like verse number 8. Look at it. Verse number 8 tells us that this former beggar, that now he's, he's leaping up, he stood, walked, and he entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Now, the idea is this, that he didn't just do it one time. He didn't, he didn't just get up and take one step. He didn't just, what, what, what was the next thing? He, he, didn't just, he didn't just jump up one time. He didn't just leap one time. The, the, the inference here is that he kept on walking. He kept on leaping. He kept on jumping. You know, it, it would kind of be like this. Come here, Jamie. Come here. If, 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 if Jamie were Peter or John, John, you come here. You're, you'll be John. I'm the lame guy. And you say, amen to that. <laughs> now they, they, they've just got me up off the ground and now we're, we're headed toward the temple and I'm walking in between them and they're sophisticated. Peter and John. And here I'm a guy and I've never walked before. I've never run before. I've never leaped before. I've never done any of those things before. And they're walking along all dignified. And here I go, woo! And he said, Whoa, settle down, settle down. <laughs> You're a good John. One of the best Johns I've ever had. <laughs> now, they keep in mind, what are, what are all these people? You see, we look like we're in the temple now. And, and Peter and John and this guy, they, they, they've just made their way in. They're getting ready for prayer meeting. Now, I have this feeling that they heard this guy a long time before they seen him. They heard him because he was, he, he was, he was doing all of these things. So, so they couldn't help but notice. Not many people holler when they come into prayer meeting. So, so something's, something's different here. So, 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 so maybe, maybe tonight, maybe, maybe we're a bystander. Maybe we're just here and we're, 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 we're not a beggar. Maybe, maybe we've been saved, but we've never really progressed much in our, in our relationship with Christ. And, and we would just more identify with, this, with, with these bystanders. And as, as bystanders, we, we could ask this question. Now stay with me. You've got to stay with me. Promise me you'll stay with me. We'd say, do you see a man walking? into the house of God. Well, we know they did. Because it says in verse 9, it says, all the people. Now, who are those people? That's all those that have already gathered. That's all those that could walk and talk and do all those. They're already there. They're, they're in their seat where their Afghans at. <laughs> They've already moved their padded chair to their table, and they're, they're just waiting for prayer meeting to start. <laughs> they're there. And all those people, they saw him walking and praising God. Now, now, now maybe at first they, they thought, because they don't know who it is right now. And maybe they think, well, maybe that's one of those religious zealots that were preaching in tongues. Remember two or three couple of weeks ago on Wednesday night we talked about that, that, that episode of Scripture? And they said, maybe, maybe it's one of those that... That was back there from the Feast of Pentecost. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's where it comes. Maybe, maybe they didn't see immediately what had happened in this, in this guy's life. But put this on your letter B. Letter A said, do you, do you see a man walking into the house of God? But this is what I want you to get. Or do you see a miracle? Worship in the house of God. Do you see a miracle worshiping in the house of God? The people that were there, they heard this man shout. 
They saw him jumping. They seen him walking. And by now he's got close enough that they know. And the wife's reaching over her elbow and her husband. She says, honey, do you know who that is? That's that, that's that lame guy that's been sitting down there by the gate of the temple for all of these years. That's that, that's that guy that you gave a quarter to the other day. That's that, that's that guy that he's never been able to walk. That's the lame beggar. But now he's jumping and he's shouting and he's, and he's praising God because something miraculous happened. When Trinity Baptist Church was built, I was pastor at Oak Plain out there at Central. We are just a regular, normal building. I'm going to tell you, but preachers, when they ride around, they notice churches. People notice all kinds of things. I notice churches. When we go on vacation, I slow down at every church, especially if it's on Sunday. I, I, I try to get a scope of how many cars are in the parking lot so I can guess their approximate attendance. Well, here, here I was, and, and I'd been out there at Oak Wind, and, and I'd drive through here. My grandmother lived not too far, so I'd pass here quite often and watch the building begin to be built and seen all of these things. And, 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 and you know, pre preachers do this. I don't know if you know preachers do this or not, but they do. They say, man, I'd like to preach in a big church like that. And, and here, here, here's, what, here's what preachers think. I'm sure you don't think this in whatever you did for a living. You think, I wouldn't have to deal with the same stuff I have to deal with out, out here in this place and over here in this place. But you know what's, you, you know what has happened? And I, I didn't just figure this out when I got here. I figured this out somewhere in between 25 years ago and today. I don't know exactly when. Do you know what happens here? What happens here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. This is not a place where a group of people that just have it all together meet. It's not. And, and I'm, not, I'm not talking down to anybody. You know what's represented in this room tonight? In, in people's background? Adultery. Alcoholism. Uh, name it. I bet it's represented somewhere along the line. We're just a group of unperfect people. And what, what we are, we're, we're not just men walking into the house of God. But when we come together and we meet together to worship Sunday, Sunday night, or Wednesday night, what we really are we're a bunch of miracles. We're a bunch of miracles. Now, I, I don't know the story of everybody's life, but, but and, and we're not going to take time to do it tonight, but, but you could, some of you could, honestly, and you know, you could stand up tonight and your testimony would be that it was just like it was a miracle of God for this guy to get up off the ground and walk into the temple and to praise God. You're a miracle for where God brought you from. To where you are now. So when we meet together, we're not just a group of people that walk into the church. We're a room full of miracles. Miracles. And, and, and we walk around today and we say, well, maybe the day of miracles has passed. Listen, every one of us are a miracle in some way, shape, form, or fashion. When we gather, we're not just men walking into a building, but we're a group of miracles worshiping him who performed the miracle in our life. And this brings us back to a thought that we mention quite often. He's the same. Today, today, and forevermore. Amen. So wouldn't that mean that if he were able to reach into our, as, as, as Peter and John reached down to this lame man and 
began to lift him up, and God put strength in his legs and his ankles, and he stood and jumped and ran and all those things. Wouldn't God still be able to do whatever the miracle needed to be? Wouldn't God still be able to deliver people from alcoholism? Wouldn't God still be able to salvage a marriage, a marriage that might be wrecked by adultery? Wouldn't God be able, Jim, to, to, to salvage people's lives that are messed up on drugs? Yes. Yes. So if you're just a bystander here tonight, I want you to understand, you're, you're not in a room of a bunch of people that have had it all together every day of our life. We have. We are where we are because of a miracle of God. The same premise as what happened in this story. God providentially and sovereignly put us in a place where somebody or maybe several somebodies was going to cross our path. And he was going to use them to, to, to do the work that he wanted to do and desired to do in our life. That's what God did on that day. And that's what God still does today. Amen. Now Peter and John are gone. They're in glory. But you know who's here to carry on the, the work of the believers now? Do you know who it is? It's Wayne. It's Taxi. It's Doug. It's Doug. It's Richard. Ryan, it's us. It's us. Do we desire a handout which ain't going to last very long? Or do we want a handout? As a 17 year old boy, I got a handout. And that handout hand of an almighty God when I place my faith and trust in his beloved son to save my soul. And that hand up is still carrying me today. And that hand up will carry me throughout all eternity. God may use us to be a hand up to somebody that he puts in our Will we be usable to the Master to accomplish His purpose? Let's pray. Father, how grateful we are tonight that as we look back over the course of our lives, and I've known most of these people for a pretty short time, but as we look back over the course of our lives, that we find ourselves in this in this story or some of some in this room are, are, are those people that we, we, we were the spiritually crippled we were the spiritually inept we were the spiritually down and out and and, and, and you sent some folks across our path and, and and through them and the work of the Holy Spirit of God and the finished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary you've given us a hand up you saved us maybe you restored us Maybe you've just lifted us up from a, from a dark place in our life, but you've done a great work in our life. Lord, tonight if there's one man, woman, boy, or girl in this room, and they're in that low place, they're in that place where they either, they either need a hand out or a hand up. Lord, tonight that, that you, maybe it's through the preaching of your word, maybe it's through the fellowship with another brother or sister in this room tonight that, that you would use us to, to extend a hand up and that you would change lives you would change homes you would save marriages you would save people's testimony in their, in their walk with you God don't let us look at your word and say these great things used to used to used to used to happen but they still happen they still happen. Lord, you desire to, 
to work through us, the church. So, Lord, as we go out from here tonight and tomorrow and, and, and those people that you've placed in to pass the, for our path to cross, let us speak a word of authority. Let us speak a word and, and share with them the only name that means anything, and that would be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who can save, who can change, who can heal, who can fulfill whatever need is represented in anybody's life. Let us extend a hand up to those who need it, just as you extended the hand up to us in our lives. Bless us as we depart this place and let us remember that we're just a bunch of walking, talking miracles that are gathered in this place to worship the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray.